Hello, I'm okay, X Toy Cat. And how is it that there were three separate aquatic updates for Minecraft Bedrock? And in addition, the Never used to be something which spawned in the overworld, and when it was destroyed, it looked like this. This all makes no sense, and that's because Minecraft Bedrock is significantly less known about than Minecraft Java updates. When we say Minecraft 1.18, we usually mean the Java version 1.18, and that's the version that is covered most here on YouTube. But for every single update title, there is an equivalent Minecraft Bedrock update title, and in some cases, these have such varying features that it doesn't even look like the same game. But also as I'm going to be going through with today's video and helping you with every single Minecraft Bedrock update and exactly what was found inside of it, this is going to be a big but also informative and maybe even fun video as we dive into each of those things. And I want to just start by saying that although Minecraft Java has five separate phases of development, there was in dev, in development, inf dev, infinite development, then there was alpha, then beta, then full release, which is where we are right now. Even though it's been more than 10 years, 1.18 signifies the 18th major update after 1.0 release. But the Bedrock system is very different because there has only ever been two systems. There is the alpha and then the full release. Arguably, there's a third phase when we switched from calling it Pocket Edition to Bedrock, but we'll move into that later because the first ever version of Minecraft Bedrock released over 10 years ago now on the 16th of August 2011. It was available exclusively for the Xperia Play gaming console, which was Sony's attempt at making a a phone specifically for gaming and as a result of paying some money to Mojang to get Minecraft, one of the biggest indie games out there, exclusive for it. They figured it would do quite well and the fact that you haven't heard about it since probably tells you enough about how that one went and this was a very primitive version of Minecraft. Seriously, you're looking around and you're thinking, okay, so it's exciting. You can fly around. There's a creative mode. No, there is just one game mode and it is equivalent to creative. Uh, the set of blocks you had were very limited and it was just a way to build. It was a block editing tool effect um, which was fun enough, but it had very, very limited size worlds, and there were no objectives to speak of. You just kind of existed in this world that you could fly around. If we take a quick look at the menu screen for the first ever Minecraft Pocket Edition version, you can see how it not only has the uh, kind of beta style background that Minecraft Java used to use, but it also had some form of multiplayer functionality as well as an options menu, all of which is perfectly designed for touch screens. Because bear in mind, back then, phone screens were much smaller, even on the Xperia Play, but Xperia Play play exclusivity did run out just a short couple of months later with the Android devices receiving 0.1.1 allowing every Android device to play Minecraft on the 7th of the October 2021 and then 0.1.2 allowed all iOS devices to join the fray too meaning that Minecraft was officially available on all devices as of the 17th of November 2011. However the 0.1.3 alpha was the first one that really started to add features to the game. Let me tell you about the excitement of 0.1.3 free. That's right, the first major update added cacti to the deserts and also improved tablet support, as well as fixing a bug which could crash the game when playing online on iOS specifically. And that was the end of 0.1 in the Pocket Edition Alpha. As you can clearly see, a huge amount of effort was put into updating this version of Minecraft over all of those versions. But no, realistically, this was the version just about getting Minecraft onto phones. And 0.2 is when they really made the progress right, because 0.2.0 released on February of 2012. And it was really exciting because it added for the first time on the phones, survival mode. And survival mode, let me tell you, this is exactly what you're expecting because it had just three inventory slots and then you had to press the three dots to find the other ones. And instead of having actual inventory management, when you picked something up, it would just be added to that slot in your inventory. So here is someone picking up a cyan flower, as you can see. And now when they open their inventory, they have a cyan flower in there. Three inventory slots is absolutely brutal. The more brutal thing though is having the entire screen be taken up by these mandatory controls controls on the left here, and also the fact that the only way to tap things is to physically touch that point on your screen. Survival mode was absolutely brutal in this version. I remember playing it and thinking to myself, this cannot be considered survival by anyone's definition. However, technically speaking, you did have health. Technically speaking, there were sheep in the game that like, you know, if you looked at them the wrong way, maybe they'd murder you. I mean, they wouldn't because they were nice. And there were shears, so there was kind of a point to survival. You did have to go out and get the resources yourself. It just kind of all felt wrong 
wrong. And that's before we mention, you know this stone pickaxe you've been seeing all this time? No, that isn't just a mistake. That's not just, oh yeah, that's, uh, you know, someone who's crafted that. No, that is the, something you start the game with in 0.2 and that has infinite durability, as you can see next to it. It's just the weirdest version of Minecraft survival. I did not get much play out of it and that's why maybe it was a good thing that 0.2.1 released and when it launched, it had split touch controls. Finally, you could choose not to have to tap things manually. Also added bookshelves to the game and it added a cracking animation when destroying blocks in survival, which meant that finally it didn't feel like playing a weird Minecraft clone. It felt like playing a weird Minecraft clone where you could destroy blocks and it actually made sense. For what it's worth, there was a 0.2.2 alpha update that did release, but all it did was fix some bugs uh, where certain Android devices could not open the game. But really it was all about Pocket Edition Alpha 0.3.0. If 0.2 was revolutionary because it added the pickaxe and mining to Minecraft, 0.3 was revolutionary because it added crafting for the very first time. In addition, your pickaxe actually now had durability and you had to actually craft one. It was a really weird world. Why don't you get a free pickaxe when you spawn, some might say. And yeah, the only major positive thing to say about this update was of course it added crafting to the game, which looked nothing like the system on uh, Java or even the one on console for that matter. It was called the Mattis system and uh, honestly, uh, it was just them trying to work around with touchscreen devices. So much of the early Pocket Edition uh, days were just about this. By the way, as a fun fact, there was no 0.3.1 update, but there was 0.3.2, which added furnaces, gold, iron, diamonds, and smelting to the game for the very first time. Then the 0.3.3 update came out, and it was revolutionary because you could die for the first time because they added spiders and skeletons. Creepers were also added, but they didn't spawn into the game naturally, so were they ever really added? And also, the arrows are now usable because when they added the skeleton, they also added a bow. That's right, you can shoot things at a distance. We are in the normal Minecraft territory, and this was uh, notable because this was a year after Minecraft Pocket Edition had released. Some people had owned this game for a full 12 months, and it was just now starting to vaguely resemble the many year out of date versions of Minecraft Java survival. Um, indeed, 0.5 4 came out just a month afterwards, adding beds, sleeping to skip the night, farming, and creepers spawning naturally. But it's 0.5.0 we really have to talk about because the nether was added to Minecraft Pocket Edition, but maybe not really because they forgot to add a nether portal. Or rather, perhaps we could say they didn't forget to add a nether portal, they decided not to add one and instead to have a nether reactor. So a nether reactor was crafted like this using cobblestone, gold blocks, and a nether reactor core. And once activated, the nether reactor would turn turn into the never effectively in the immediate area around you. It looked like this and honestly I, I just can't get over what a weird solution this was, but it technically worked, and so as a result, one of Minecraft Pocketition's most infamous features ever was the Never Reactor, and the whole reason for its existence was that they couldn't add the Never officially, so they just kind of added the hacky solution. Speaking of hacky solutions, this was the first ever officially noted bug that started with MCPE, which is still how they note bugs to this day. There's now tens of thousands of the things, but MCPE 1 came out of 0.5.0, with MCPE 1 being trapped doors can't be crafted in survival. The official reason for this was them setting the wrong category for trap doors, um, but the funniest bit about this, in my opinion, has to be the fact that this exact same bug of trap doors being uncraftable because of a wrong set category um, actually came back six times. MCPE 16, MCPE 41, MCPE 53, MCPE 58, MCPE 123, and MCPE 231. Six separate bugs were all this exact same thing, which is just very funny to look back at and see now. Speaking of tracking bugs, by the way, it's worth mentioning that although uh, this fixed MCPE 1 and 39 other bugs, there were 578 reported Minecraft Pocketition bugs that were not fixed for the release of 0.5.0, and so this was the first time we really got a feel as to just how much bug fixing needed to be done. Also, I just have to point it out again, but the Never Spires is one of the weirdest things they've added to Minecraft. It just kind of looks otherworldly, and it's the Minecraft bedrock version of the brick pyramid that exists on Java, where it's just like, yeah, they added added something to the game and then they realized, yeah, maybe that's not the greatest of ideas. Uh, however, for what it's worth, 0.6.0 was not the update that removed the Never Reactor. In fact, they doubled down on it because in January of 2013, they added Neverac, Quartz, and Never Bricks to the game. Because previously they had Zombie Pigment and uh, Glowstone, but they figured people might want those other blocks as well. Also, now that you've got to go to the scary Never, or at least some version of it, you might want some armor, which was added in this update. And the weirdest one to me was the addition of the Stonecutter. 
cutter. So the stone cutter is a block we know that looks like this today and is great for crafting stairs and slabs, but the stone cutter that was added in 0.6.0 was used to craft stone blocks exclusively. It was effectively a crafting table, but just for stone. And this is another one of those blocks that I just never really fully understood when playing Minecraft Block Edition. Like, why do we need a block just for crafting stone? Why is this an exclusive? And the official answer is there was a lack of space in the crafting interface to add all the stone tools in there, but this just feels like the hackiest solution in the world. But welcome to Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Hacky solutions to problems that we're not really sure about is kind of the name of the game here because this is not just a game trying to make itself on phones. It's a game trying to make itself phones and tablets and then later games, consoles and everything else that also has to emulate near perfectly a game made in a different programming language for a different set of platforms. And so that led to the very weird things like, by the way, Bedrock Crafting. However, we have to make way. 0.6 is gone. 0.7 is in. And now, uh, in, as of June 3rd, 2013, the first ever version of Pocket Edition Realms has been added to the game alongside this snazzy new menu screen, which as you can see is very basic. But now the basic bones for the current Minecraft Bedrock menu are starting to form here with the giant ugly gray buttons, which somehow are still a thing, by the way, and uh, the kind of uh, fading panorama in the background. Anyway, so this was the first ever edition of Minecraft Pocket Edition Realms, and uh, that was about it for this update. Then with 0.7.1, they fixed some bugs. Then with 0.7.2, they fixed more bugs. Then with 0.7.3, do you know what they did? They added the sun, moon, stars, sunrise, and sunset, because with all these bugs they're fixing, we need something to watch. Also, double chest became possible. Mobs can be lit on fire, and the background became animated as opposed to just a solid uh, background. Then with 0.7.4, moon phases, commands, flint and steel, igniting creepers. 0.7.5 allowed placing a cake to not crash the game anymore, and all sorts of other various fixes. And then finally, for the sixth consecutive bug fix in a, in a row, 0.7.6 released in October of 2013, which, uh, if you read through it very carefully, includes bug fixes. Wow, what an exciting term. This is obviously uh, the system they're following of the Java edition, where every single major update, i.e. the second number, is the one that represents something brand new being added, whereas the ones after that are usually just fixing or refining content from the second digit. So first digit is whether we're in alpha or full release, second digit is major update number, and third digit is just what number of that update we're in, and that's why 0.8.0 was so exciting, because it's a brand new update, and it adds all all sorts of new things like three brand new plank types, slabs, stairs for those as well, carpets, pumpkins, dead bushes, sponges with the absolute zero use that they had on Java at this time, red powered rails, rails and breeding. There was technically redstone in this update but it only worked for the uh, powered rails effectively and so it wasn't very useful but something that was useful if you could handle it was the increasing of the render distance if you selected the far render distance option. So this that you're seeing right here is eight chunks of render distance and after this update, you could go into 12.5 chunks. Whoa! Imagine all the things you could see in 12 and a half chunks. Again, even as late as 2013, render distance in Minecraft was nowhere near as advanced as it is today. That is one of those advancements that just keeps on giving. As computer hardware keeps on going upwards, so too do the number of things we can see in Minecraft. 0.8.1 was a bug fix, but 0.8.2 did something they hadn't done since 2011 and launched Minecraft on new platforms because officially you could download Minecraft Pocket Edition on Amazon Fire TV. This was about eight months before Minecraft was bought, and you can see that right now, even from the name, from everything else, they are very much committed to this being the Minecraft version that is on mobiles, and like, even when we're looking at gameplay with all of these features we've seen so far, it's very clear that this is the weird phone version. I mean, it's always clear when you play Minecraft Pocket Edition, it's not real Minecraft, it's just a curiosity you play on the go. Obviously, that's not what the entire community thought, and there were people who were in love with this version. Maybe it was their own version, maybe they just like playing the multiplayer or the realms or the servers or any of these other things the community had put together, but they're, for what it's worth mentioning, a lot of players who did also play elsewhere saw it as more of a curiosity, something which was due to change this year, but not until the 0.9.0 update released, because in July of 2014, they officially added different world types. You could now have a super flat world, just called flat. You'd have an old world type, which was every Minecraft world to this point, and get this, infinite world types were added to the game. Alongside infinite worlds, there were villages, caves, rivers, mine shafts, dungeons, and also strongholds, although there were no eye of enders or end at this point, so let's just pretend uh, that there wasn't a stronghold effectively. 
and then get this, on top of all of those things, desert whales were added to the game. Minecraft Pocket Edition became a real Minecraft version on July of 2014 because that is so exciting and that's before we mentioned that they added new biomes, endermen, villagers and emeralds, although there was no way to trade the emeralds or the villagers. It was still cool to look at a villager with emeralds in your hand and go, yeah, one day we'll be able to trade. And so yeah, the 0.9.1 all the way through 0.9.5 alphas fixed bugs which had become prevalent in Minecraft at this point, including, interestingly enough, you might have noticed something that was weird that the baked potato just showed as item.potatobake.name. Wow, they actually fixed that because this bug had come up 12 separate times. For some reason, they just kept on adding <laughs> a, a, a baked potato bug to the game, which was finally fixed in 0.9.4, and 0.9.5 was when they removed the game from the Samsung Galaxy Store, meaning that it was officially just available on the Google Play Store. I think it might have still been the Android Store at that time, uh, let's fact check when that changed, by the way, because the Google Play Store is actually uh, a newfangled name that is weird and different. Okay, I'm showing my age here. Um, but also uh, the iOS Store. And so again, three separate mobile platforms. But something very interesting happened between 0.9 and 0.10, which was the sale of Minecraft to Microsoft. They made loads of interesting comments about how they wanted a Minecraft that was cross-playable across all of the various consoles. And everyone at the time, myself included as a console edition YouTuber, assumed they meant that, ooh, we're going to have a version of Minecraft where you can play between Java and between Minecraft on the consoles and then maybe even one day the phones get added but let me tell you about the plan they had instead because 0.10 came out adding spruce, birch, jungle, acacia and dark oak fence and fence gates as well as baby animals not drowning which is I guess an important thing but it was 0.11 which released seven full months after 0.10 that really showed the hand that Microsoft was starting to take the route with because obviously this update added fishing, boats, bats, squid, spider, chicken, jockeys and, and uh, it was very exciting in that way. Also fixed a ton of bugs and really started to improve Minecraft Pocket Edition in a lot of ways. However, it also added skins and skin packs to the game. This is not the first time they were ever available for Minecraft. Contrary to popular belief, you could buy skin packs and texture packs and even eventually worlds on Minecraft console edition before this point. However, it was the first time there were kind of unnecessary uh, skin packs in the game that were primarily just made up of those very same console edition skins, but it was their attempt to monetize the game from within and it was met with not too much controversy because of course you can just not buy skins but let me tell you how they kind of continued um, this trend of moving Minecraft in a different direction because 0.12 alpha in addition to adding controller and keyboard support with hunger now being present weather sprinting sneaking and brewing pretty key mechanics also decided to release the game for Windows 10 that's right there was a Windows 10 edition beta which launched which made this Minecraft uh, pocket edition version also also playable on your Windows 10 PC. I remember speaking to my friends who played Minecraft Pocket Edition at the time uh, and made YouTube videos about it, and they were all like, huh, that sure is a weird one, but it is convenient for us as content creators because now we can just record straight from Windows 10. This is something, by the way, fun fact, that is still done to this day, but it was always called Minecraft Windows 10, and then there was Minecraft Pocket Edition, which was kind of considered separate, um, but that kind of changed later. But I just have to mention before we finish this update, 0.12 was also really exciting because it added for the first time the real never to the game. That's right, a separate dimension and everything. Um, this is one of the updates that really got me playing Minecraft Pocket Edition at the time. I was live streaming on a weird mobile games only platform because of a weird deal. It, it, it's There's a whole fun thing uh, to do with that, but I was streaming a lot of Minecraft Pocket Edition at this time, and uh, I remember going into the Nether and it was kind of intense. Uh, it was made more intense by the addition of Nether Fortresses, by the way. Uh, also in this update, they added anvils, snow golems, and charge creepers to the game, and it was at this point that I remember feeling like, yeah, this is a full version of Minecraft. It's on phones, and of course, um, you know, like if you have a preferred control scheme, you might play elsewhere, but with Minecraft Windows 10 existing, it was just a alternate version of Minecraft. This was clearly step one along the path to having Minecraft Pocket Edition become Minecraft Bedrock. But since this video is about every Minecraft Bedrock update explained, we need to talk about 0.12 uh, and the various, obviously, like uh, bug fixes, because they added a 0.12.0.1 alpha, adding the fourth version number for the first time. This is something that we'll come back to later with betas. Um, but then they added the 0.12. 
0.12.1 alpha, the 0.12.2 alpha, and 0.12.3, which alongside of bug fixes and all of those updates, 0.12.3 added the second skin pack to the game, the Halloween costume skin pack. And so yeah, that is the kind of uh, place we're at right there before 0.13 releases in November of 2015, with redstone being placeable, other redstone components starting to exist, and re in reality, the redstone system was starting to take place. A, the major community which could not abide by Minecraft Pocket Edition because it still wasn't a full game to them was the uh, the Redstone community, and that's why 0.13 fixed them. 0.13 also had a funny problem with uh, villager shapes. Um, this is uh, known uh, affectionately uh, by the editor here as thick villagers, as you can see, very adorable. Look at the size of this villager, and uh, also 0.13. <laughs> it's just so funny to look at them, right? 0.13.2 uh, also added another skin pack to the game. Again, really kind of upping these monetization inside the game options. Minecraft was one of the best-selling games of all time at this stage. Not not quite first yet, um, but there was no real way to monetize past that point on everything besides po uh, the uh, the console editions, and so that's something they really put some effort into, alongside obviously upping the quality of Minecraft as a whole, because 0.14.0 also added new redstone components, the hopper, dropper, repeater, as well as the slime block and cauldrons, and this is where another exclusive was added, because this is where water dyeing became a thing. It really is worth mentioning as we talk about 0.15 and 0.16, which I'll do kind of together here, because there were a ton of bug fixes between both of these updates, but the whole goal that Microsoft, which was now the owner of Minecraft, had between this was make Minecraft Pocket Edition more of a functional game, and my god, if you look at the uh, 2014 to 2016 era as being one of the dark ages of Minecraft development on the Java Edition, it was definitely the golden age as far as Minecraft Pocket Edition players are concerned, because on top of having all of the redstone added, the never actually coming to the game, anvils and name tags, and all these various components like witches and stuff. This was also when they added every single structure and also of 0.16.0 every single boss because beacons, the wither, the guardians, ocean monuments and elder guardians became a thing in Minecraft on top of commands. Everything that you wanted to do in Minecraft, in addition by the way to buying a ton of texture packs which were added uh, during this time, ported straight over from console edition, uh, were finally available because they wanted to get this game released and finally with December of 2016, the 1.0.0 Ender update came out, adding the last feature that it needed to call itself a complete game because the end Ender Dragon, Shulkers, and Polar Bears were added to the game. That's right, unlike Minecraft Java, which had a kind of two-phased end update, there was 1.0 and then 1.9, everything came at once uh, as far as a fully fleshed out end for Minecraft Bedrock, and this was a truly amazing time for Minecraft Bedrock, and you notice I call it the Bedrock Edition there. Uh, it wasn't actually the Bedrock Edition yet, it was still MCPE, however, it was always being referred to as the Bedrock Engine. This is because not only was it available on Pocket Edition, uh, platforms, things that you could put in your pocket, but the exact same engine was powering a game that was available on Windows 10 and all of these other TV screens, they wanted this to be just another Minecraft engine and they succeeded, but 1.1 is where things got even more interesting because the discovery update was all about adding the last little batch of features like woodland mansions, adventure mode, explorer maps, concrete, glazed terracotta, all sorts of features which had just released on Java literally months ago were now coming to the bedrock engine at the same time. However, this was also the update where they decided to add the Minecraft Marketplace. This was something um, that internally they'd been talking about for a while. They even took some creators, you know, obviously they would have done so under NDA at the time, but they took some creators, tried to get their opinions on like, so would you be uh, freaked out a little bit if we uh, maybe added this to Minecraft? It'd be a really good thing and it's only for the Pocket Edition, trust us, but like, wouldn't that be interesting? Um, and so yeah, they did this in June of 2017 and they added this uh, idea of being able to pay for maps, texture packs, mashup packs, skin, anything you want inside of Minecraft. It was a source of recurring revenue that was sold and very much is a very great source for creators to be able to sell their content directly inside of Minecraft. And uh, this was the first time that Minecraft jumped from being like, oh yeah, it's a game that has some optional extras to being a game that very much is all about making that content on the marketplace. In fact, if you look at 1.1.1 and 1.1.2 and 1.1.3, you can start to see that as well as 
as bug fixing, they start adding content to the marketplace in the later uh, V1.1.5, 6, etc. But what's about to happen is about to be perhaps the best known update of all time uh, because it's when Minecraft Bedrock Edition officially is birthed as the official name. They stop calling it Minecraft Pocket Edition. The logo stops looking like this and instead starts looking like this. And the better together update is when that happened. Minecraft Pocket Edition, as well as Minecraft Windows 10, as well as Minecraft on the Xbox One, as well as on the Switch, all stopped being their unique separate identities and all merged together to become Minecraft. You could play with any platform on any other platform at the same time using the Xbox uh, Game Attack system. And this was truly incredible. To this day, honestly, the tech uh, challenge behind making this happen was three years in the making. Ever since they started hinting towards making Minecraft Pocket Edition more of a main game, this was the day they'd been working towards because now not only could they have, uh, you know, like obviously uh, the crossplay and all of the benefits of having just one Minecraft that's unified and then the Java edition, but also now every single one of these platforms had access to the marketplace. And uh, on top of adding all of those things, they decide to add all of the features that were on console edition, but not pocket edition, or all of the easy features, I should say. Uh, banners, jukeboxes, structure blocks, armor stands, book and quill, fireworks, parrots, and the recipe book. And the most interesting bit of all here is this was also the update where they renamed Minecraft Java edition uh, from Minecraft to Minecraft Java edition. That is why we call it Java edition now. Uh, that is a name that was very much disliked by the community. There were all sorts of add-ons to change it back from Minecraft Java edition to Minecraft. Um, but nowadays it's just kind of stuck that yeah, there's Java edition and there's Bedrock edition. Bedrock edition is the one that doesn't call itself anything. And Java edition is the one that's in Java and calls itself the Java edition. It's a little confusing, but people generally get the point if you're a Minecraft fan at least. Anyway, so they had to do a whole ton of bug fixes. Seriously, they went from 1.2.0 to 1.2.1 all the way up to 1.2.0. 2.16 it has to be mentioned because there are all sorts of different uh, options that we're adding because at the same time as trying to get better together to work they also were trying to get the next major update the one which was planned to come out on Java out on Bedrock at the same time they'd already added all of the existing Java features or the majority there's a huge there's a huge list of parity changes they haven't added um, but this is why the 1.3.0 update was so exciting and try and guess what 1.3.0 was about it's one of the most famous Minecraft updates ever, and can you tell me what it is? You might not be able to because it didn't exist. There was never a Bedrock Edition 1.3.0. It was skipped, and the reasons as to why are still debated to this day. However, all we know is they went straight from 1.2.16 to 1.4.0 with the aquatic update phase 1. That's right, not only did they decide to release an update for Minecraft uh, Bedrock that matched Minecraft Java, they released it earlier, and this was the update that they released Blue Eyes, Dolphins, Fish Mobs, Ocean Biomes. It was very exciting if you're a Bedrock player, but this is most crucially a full the update that Salmon went from being just one mob to being free on the Bedrock Edition. That's right, Big Salmon was added in 1.4.0, and of course there were bug fixes again, but then there was 1.5.0 with the Aquatic Update Phase 2, adding Turtles, Conduits, Bubble Columns, lots more bug fixes, still trying to make all of the various editions work in tandem, fixing the bugs from the Aquatic Update, and then 1.6.0 comes out with the last parts of the Aquatic Update, adding phantoms, slow falling, and barriers. Unofficially, the community called this the Aquatic Update Part 3, but it was just Bedrock 1.6.0, and during this year, they had a plan, and they were sticking to it. Every two months, they would release an update. Seriously. May of 2018, then July of 2018, and then August of 2018, all saw their own Minecraft updates, and then the next one after that was, you guessed it, two months later, in October of 2018. All they added on this update was scoreboard functionality. You could start to tell that they were really burning out the cycle of having full brand new updates every two months. But the really interesting thing is that 1.8.0 came out in December and it started to add features from the brand new, kind of uh, unknown about yet, um, village and pillage update because again, Bedrock was now starting to not just get Java content, but to get it early. They added pandas, bamboo, scaffolding, crossbows, and stray cats. And uh, then also uh, they started to uh, work on the next phase of village and pillage because in February of 2019, they added barrels, furnaces,
furnaces, grindstone, pillagers, and uh, the uh, those were experimental. But there were also new stairs, slabs, and walls. In fact, one of my most uh, like like one of the update videos that stuck in my head was talking about this update because it was the most single blocks they'd added into an update at that point. There were so many types of walls, stairs, and slabs that it effectively made its own update. But it was just a village and pillage part. But then 1.10 came out, which was the uh, texture update. Seriously, if you look through this uh, phase of Minecraft, they are the days of the smallest, most unmemorable updates ever, because every two months they would release an update without fail, just with whatever they'd been working on. If that meant that we just got new walls, or if that meant we got a scoreboard, that would be what happened. If, like in the case of 1.10, that meant we got, like, some of the features of 1.14, but behind the experiments toggle, then that would be that. If that meant that we got the new textures as just an entire update, then it would mean that too. But April of 2019 was the time where we finally got the full village and pillage update, adding all of those experiments features into the main game itself. This was particularly notable because it was actually timed exactly with the Java edition so that they launched at identical times and they could just call it the village and pillage update. Something they were planning on doing was just having Minecraft updates be named rather than numbered at this point. However, this was something that didn't work so well, which is why we saw the very quick update theme continue where they went from 1.11 to 1.12. And let me tell you about 1.12 because they added the camera only from the give command. Also, there were new game rules, like spawn radius. You know that setting you use all the time? That was added in 1.12. 1.13 was just as exciting, adding the wither rolls, light blocks, no block sounds, suspicious stoop, brown mushroom foxes, and dead coral. In other words, a few missing features from village and pillage, plus some just features that they needed to add anyway. And most interestingly, the light block, another bedrock exclusive at the time, that was super, super, super useful for content creators. And by that, I don't, I'm not trying to say YouTubers in a weird way. Why do we call YouTubers? YouTubers content creators, aren't we video makers? Anyway, yeah, the long story short is uh, one point. Uh, this this is an update that was all about people playing Minecraft but making things that they could sell to other people because they also added the character creator feature to the game for the first time where you could not only buy skins, but you could buy parts for your skins. Although those parts for your skins could only be used on the Alex and Steve skins. And it's a very weird, confusing thing that I assume they make a ton of money on and I, I can't really uh, understand the logic for it otherwise. Speaking of things I don't understand the logic for, 1.14 was one of the most enrage-filled updates, uh, but also was very cute because 1.14 added bees, honey, and bee nests. But it also, uh, was the first update not to be received by Legacy Console Edition because that is when they discontinued that version of the game and also when Minecraft Bedrock officially came to the PlayStation 4. This was the platform they'd been angling for for so long because although the Better Together update brought in the Switch and brought in the Xbox One, uh, Sony said no and the reason they primarily were saying no was because why would we allow Xbox Live accounts on a PlayStation system where people can buy things outside of a PlayStation ecosystem and use them over here on PlayStation. So PlayStation 4 joined Bedrock with two key, key conditions and one of those was the fact that it had to uh, use a Microsoft account and not an Xbox Live account. It functionally means exactly the same thing but it's an easier way uh, to justify it. And the second thing is PlayStation 4 to this day uses a token system which is not interchangeable with Minecoins and so if you want to buy PlayStation 4 content use uh, Mi Minecraft PlayStation 4 tokens rather than Minecoins. And we could talk about the weird complexities of that. There were so many debates about whether uh, the PlayStation version should have joined it. Uh, we can also talk about the fact that there were lots of bug fixes uh, that came along with this because 1.14 was uh, the first time they started putting a lot of effort into the version numbering system to try to make sure that they could have a consistent naming scheme between Bedrock and Java. They just said that they weren't going to use update, um, you know, like version numbers. They were going to use update titles, but they kind of meant the exact opposite because this was the end of the monthly or bi-monthly updates. Instead, after 1.14 uh, released, they skipped 1.15 and went straight to 1.16 in June of 2020 and launched the Never Update, which launched at exactly the same time on Java and Bedrock. This was an exciting day. Um, they finally had gone to the stage where they could just say that this update was called 1.16.0. There wasn't a 1.14 for Bedrock and a 1.15 for Java. This was Minecraft Update 1.16.0. We finally reached parity in update titles between Java and Bedrock, but the thing that was way more exciting than that was that they added a to this update and the thing that's more exciting than that is that this is the time it finally launched on the smart fridge that's right, Minecraft Smart Fridge Edition was added to Bedrock in uh, June of 2020, and truly, the Minecraft world has not been the same since. I love being able to play Minecraft on my fridge, and uh, 
<laughs> Honestly, I'm sad I don't have a smart fridge, solely because I can't play Minecraft on it, actually. Anyway, there was also 1.16.1, 1.16.1.03, 1 and if you look through this list of bug fixes, there was a lot of them. They have very confusing titles, uh, but the big one was 1.16.200, which added the Render Dragon to Windows 10. Ray tracing became a real thing, and it, man, RTX and Minecraft is beautiful. Um, the Render Dragon also caused a whole bunch of other issues, like uh, removing shader support for, uh, for the community um, outside of RTX. It caused all sorts of other weird issues, um, but has significantly improved performance, um, and it needs in significantly improved performance because of how much of a dip it takes when you turn on RTX. But RTX is beautiful, we can all agree. Anyway, that now brings us into 1.17, which was initially envisioned as the Caves and Cliffs update. However, because of the coronavirus pandemic, you guys hear about that, apparently... Apparently, people have been been dying or something. I uh, I clearly need to follow the news more. But uh, because of the uh, issues of uh, such a big technical update, they decided to split it into two, and they launched all the features they'd been planning at this time, but without a way to access them until 1.18 launched, which was later that same year, November of 2021, which is when the new cave and mountain generation came alongside ore veins and increased world height both upwards and downwards. 1.18.1 followed just a short month later, and later on in December, December, we saw 1.18.2. At time of recording this video, there isn't a 1.18.3, but I can guarantee you one's in the works. And 1.19.0 is the next major update we expect, which will be the same between Java and Bedrock. Indeed, every update between 1.16 and 1.18, me explaining in this video was kind of dumb and like, maybe besides RTX, because the truth is, is most of Minecraft Pocket Edition's history has been the second rate backwards game. That changed in 2014 when Microsoft bought Mojang and knew that they could turn this into a profitable, secondary version of the game and although everyone laughed at them at the time and everyone kept saying this wouldn't work between then and now the truth is is bedrock is starting to take over as the version of minecraft and so i hope having this video to take you through every single update and the things found within it was something that you found useful if it was don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe to this video. It was a very long time. I had to record. I, there's so many things have happened during this. A number of times I had to go back and be like, okay, that segment wasn't very clear. Let's try that again. Was a lot. But I hope that the culmination of all of these hours of putting this video together was something that you enjoyed. And if it was, consider subscribing. And either way, I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.